Tendon pain can be really frustrating. And if you found this video, maybe you've had tendon pain for days, weeks, or even months. Or maybe you've even had tendon pain off and on for years and you can't figure out why it keeps coming back. I've helped hundreds of clients understand and resolve their pain. Basketball players with patellar tendon pain, runners with Achilles tendon pain, dancers with hip tendon pain, rock climbers with forearm and shoulder pain, and many more. And in doing so, I've realized that there are four guiding principles of tendon training. And here's the thing, you don't need to be a physical therapist to understand these four principles. Once you understand these four principles, you'll understand why you're getting tendon pain, how to get rid of it, how long it's gonna take, and how to keep it from coming back. So let's go ahead and dive right into the principles of tendon training because I think some of these are going to surprise you. Principle number one, your tendons don't wanna heal, they just want to survive. Okay, let me explain. Here's what your tendon looks like. This is your muscle, this is your tendon, and we're representing a degenerative or an injured portion of your tendon with these black X's here. In reality, it actually kind of looks something like this, but we're gonna simplify and use this diagram to help you understand the main principles here. So here's the issue. Your body wants to protect this injured area and it doesn't wanna to have to use this area or heal this area unless it absolutely has to. This should make sense from an evolutionary standpoint because your body's just trying to protect you and make sure that you're able to get resources and survive. So basically, your body has learned to go around the injured portion of a tendon like it's a rock in a stream. But if we wanna actually heal this portion of the tendon, we need to find a way to actually target that area. Well, stick with me because this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but we have to take advantage of something called stress relaxation or viscoelastic creep. Stress relaxation occurs within the tendon when the muscle can slowly shorten and the tendon can slowly lengthen. This occurs during isometric exercises or very slow resistance exercises. For example, if you're holding a wall sit, your quadricep muscle will slowly shorten and your tendon will slowly lengthen and reduce tension by about 45% after around 30 seconds. This 30 seconds of relaxation and reduced tension is where we get that viscoelastic creep. And this is particularly important because it's during that 30 seconds and especially towards the end of that 30 seconds where we're going to stimulate this area of degenerative tendon. A lot of other types of exercises don't specifically stimulate this area and they work around it instead. So for example, if we're doing fast movements like plyometrics and jumping, we're gonna move the whole muscle tendon unit as a whole and we're gonna largely work around the degenerative area. But with a 30 second heavy isometric exercise, we can stimulate this area specifically. Now that still leaves us with a lot of questions though. So let's move into principle number two, load the tissue with the issue. This means that we need to make sure that we're specifically loading the painful tendon and not generally loading a bunch of tendons and areas around that. Let's use the patellar tendon as an example. If we're having pain in the patellar tendon, the most important thing that we need to do is to deliver load directly to the patellar tendon. Although back squats with a barbell are a good exercise for strengthening your legs, they're not going to deliver a lot of load directly to the patellar tendon. Choosing, for example, instead a leg extension isometric, a Spanish squat, a split squat, or step ups could allow us to more directly load that patellar tendon. So overall, it's really important that we're choosing the right exercise to directly load the correct tendon. And that leads us to principle number three, light loads won't move the needle. This is a really common issue with rehab. A lot of times, clients will go to physical therapy and they will not get prescribed exercise with adequate load to truly create tendon remodeling and lasting change. When we look at the research on this, we know that we need to get to at least a 70% contraction strength, which you could think of as seven out of 10 intensity. Now you might need to build up to this if you're in pain, but it's really important that we're building up to really strong muscle contractions that are adequately challenging to stimulate that tendon. And don't be afraid if this causes a little bit of pain, try to monitor your symptoms 24 hours later and make sure your pain returns to baseline and also try to keep your pain level below four out of 10 overall. This will help the rehab process progress more quickly. That said, that does lead us to principle number four, tendons take time. Tendon healing can often take a long time. 
for chronic tendon pain, it often takes consistent loading for up to around three months to see full resolution of symptoms and functional changes to tendon properties. It's very common for people to try rehab or to try exercises for two weeks or four weeks or even eight weeks, two months, and still not fully resolve their symptoms and end up back in this cycle. It's really important that you're consistent for long enough that we can get to lasting change. My recommendation is loading the tendon three times a week for three months. It might sound like a lot, but if you're choosing the right exercises, then this actually isn't a lot of work. Instead of doing 60 minutes of general low level exercises and passive modalities, spend five to 10 minutes doing high load isometric contractions to that specific tendon with good technique. Again, just five to 10 minutes, three times a week. You're gonna to need to apply these exercises to the specific area that you're working. If you're a rock climber with forearm tendon pain, maybe that's training your flexors and your extensors and your grip, each with a high quality, heavy isometric exercise for three sets of 30 seconds. If you're that basketball player with the patellar tendon pain, maybe it's choosing two or three exercises like the split squats and the leg extension isometrics that target that patellar tendon directly and loading those for 30 seconds, three sets each. If you're a runner or just having Achilles tendon pain that won't go away, maybe it's choosing a truly challenging position for a calf raise like this barbell calf raise setup and working that calf and Achilles muscle truly hard for 30 seconds, three or four times, three or four times a week, consistently for a few months until you can get it fully resolved. If there's an area you're specifically working on, let me know in the comments below and I could try to chime in or we can chime in and help each other with specific exercises that might help. But I think if you get these principles right and you deliver load to the right area and you're consistent for a long enough time, then you're gonna see lasting change even if you haven't been able to find that relief before. If this video is helpful for you, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.